everybody and welcome back to Computex 2023. We're here at the Lee and Lee booth and oh my word, they've got some stuff on show. You just wait till we show you the fans in a second. It, it's unreal, it's gonna change everything. But anyway, let's start by talking about the cases because they've actually refreshed the range of O11 cases. But the new O11 range has been made to be a lot simpler, easier to understand and still offer you this sort of showcase level PC gaming experience but support more and more features while still having a case that just looks absolutely phenomenal. So this is the O11 Vision. These are not concepts, but they're very late into sort of development, shall we say. So we should be starting to see some of these come out towards the end of the year. The Vision is now going to be the more entry level part of the range, starting from maybe about $140, $150 pounds around that sort of mark, which for the amount of case that you get isn't too bad. So you don't get any fans as standard. What you're seeing here are the infinite fans that you have to pay extra for. But the main difference really on this versus some of the other cases is that you now actually have glass on the top. So you've got a glass panel here, here, and here. You no longer have a bar that holds them all together. Some people didn't like that because it didn't really line up. You've got this glass look and then you've got this metal bar here. Not anymore. So they kind of sit together sort of magnetically. I am slightly concerned that that does mean some people will damage them when they fall over and you get some shadow but let's give them the benefit of the doubt until we get this in obviously we'll be uh, sort of testing how easy it is to build in and if you look underneath I'm not sure if this is gonna show up on camera very well but it's clever because it's actually mirrored on the top so you can see down and in but when you look underneath all of your components actually quite cleverly reflect so you're able to create something that's quite unique but Obviously airflow is potentially going to be a concern for some people, thermals, but what they've done is made sure you can fit two fans at the back and because you've got the airflow and ventilation coming in from the underside, whilst you can't access the top anymore for radiators and things, if you think about it you've still got the same sort of airflow just in a different sort of way that you'd usually get because you've got airflow at the side underneath and at the back so while heat does naturally rise and will sort of tend to sit at the top in theory as long as you've got these two fans at the back you should be able to get rid of that it's something again that we'll be testing out i think unless you're going for something like crazy like 4090 i9 overclocked you're not going to have to worry about it but i can understand why not having any ventilation at the top is going to concern some people so if you are wanting something a little bit bigger or something with some top ventilation, you're going to have to look over here. Oh, hello, guys. Oh, this is a surprise. Am I meant to be out of the way? <laughs> uh, you don't have to be. Designs by IFR. You do loads of custom mods like this, actually, we don't you? do indeed, yes. Lots of water cooling. Uh, what do you make of what they're showing off here? I mean, do you want, do you want to walk us through? These are the new... Uh... O11 uh, Evo XLs. So, I mean, yeah, custom water cooling. Leon Lee. Lee uh, are doing really well with the O11D, so I mean... Ha have you just got here? Yes, pretty much. Okay, so I can walk <laughs> you through, if you like, some of the... Thank you! Some of the changes that they've actually made. Kind of minor on some of them, so this is the XL version, and this hasn't been updated in quite a while. You can now fit a 420 in this. You can have a vertical GPU here as before, but as you can see, you've got a vertical GPU on the side as well. And I think you've got some more RGB and things as well. You can flip it around as well if you want to have the motherboard tray the other side oh, as well. Excellent. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you like an inverted build? Oh, for sure. <laughs> Actually, we just did an inverted build. Oh, is this a little plug to the channel? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Designs by IFR. Go subscribe. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> but anyway, as we now wait for this to spin round, I'll show you some of the differences of what was my favorite, which is the Evo version. On the face of it, not too much has changed. You've got the RGB that now goes sort of at the top and the bottom rather than on the side as well. Round the back, you've actually got extra cable management that made the motherboard tray slightly larger. If you're using a larger motherboard, it won't sort of protrude, if you like, anymore. Uh, the SSD slash hard drive cage that used to have to detach entirely, which was actually quite annoying if you had like one drive, but still wanted a bit more cable management. You can now customize those so you can take some of it out rather than other it all being in there or all being removed. And is there anything else? Yes, we've got the... L-shaped bit at the front that was metal, but it's now just two sheets of glass. I think it looks nice, but because you have the radiator support at the top as well, realistically, it's gonna be more useful for people that wanna do like crazy builds than the Vision. But if you're going for something a little bit more simple, then I guess the Vision is definitely worth considering. And then moving around to the final chassis in our test is gonna be a little bit of a controversial one. And I genuinely don't know whether I love this or whether I think it's a little misplaced. So imagine having an ITX case but it's not ITX, it's actually full-size ATX. And that's basically what you've got here. It's kind of similar in a way to the SSUPD Meshroom, that's a fantastic ITX case. This is designed to be minimal in terms of footprint while still having complete compatibility, really, and not compromising on thermals. That last one's important. So what you, I suppose, can't really see here, there is a 
build made up there we'll show you in a second, or maybe a cut to B-roll, is that the graphics card goes at the front. You heard me, the graphics card goes at the front, and then the rest of the case is actually very thin, so you do have to use an all-in-one for this. You've got a PCI riser cable that sits here, connects to the graphics card, does mean that it might be a little bit of a faff to sort of display connect your display cables, maybe there'll be an extension thrown in there, it's not 100% finalized, but this will be coming out probably later in the year as well. You've got your I.O. on the bottom, but then if you come around the back, then you see we have mesh on the other side, and this is the crucial and important bit. Your all-in-one is going to have to sit here. You can use it as an intake or an exhaust, but they recommend really using it as an intake. So the airflow comes in through here, and then your graphics card gets all of its ventilation through the front, and then you have some fans that you install here, and then that actually is chucked out the back. So you're going to be slightly limited in terms of what you can put in here, but only in the sense that you do need an all-in-one. As long as you're happy to do that, you should be happy with the end result. The only thing that they're looking to tweak at the moment is just finding a way to add maybe a little bit more ventilation to the motherboard tray, because obviously things can get very hot in there in terms of high-end builds. But I would absolutely love to know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Are you interested in the case that is as thin and compact as this, but then it's still full size, or do you think you should just go for full ITX in the first place? I'd be very keen to build it now. They're also updating their all-in-one liquid coolers, which is quite nice. We know on this channel that I've said, I hate radiators many, many times, but one of the reasons for that is because they take so long to build. The new range actually comes with the fans pre-fitted, which is pretty cool. It does mean that upgrading them is a little bit more difficult because essentially these three fans are all actually attached together in terms of cabling and they're physically attached. So if you do want to swap them out, Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but it comes like this out of the box. But it comes in three different flavors. You've got RGB, but with just plain fans. You've got RGB and RGB fans. And then at the end, you have a LCD display so you can get video, thermals, all of those things actually on the cooler itself. But I've saved the absolute coolest thing to last. These are the brand new fans. They are very much still in development. Not sure when they're going to be landing, but these essentially takes everything that you love about the Leonine fans and makes them so much better. The main thing that you'll probably see here that will catch your eye is the fact that you've actually got LCDs in the fans. And the crucial thing is you wouldn't necessarily need fans with LCDs everywhere. And this is the thing that I really like because you use one controller and you can mix and match your fans. So some could just have the standard RGB infinite effects and you'll have a PC that looks fantastic. But then maybe you want a couple of LCDs that will show you the statistics of your CPU, maybe your graphics card temperatures, all of those things. In theory, it's still in development, software, we're not sure what it's going to be able to show at the moment. But in theory, you could maybe have your thermals at the front, front of your case, maybe at your back. So you have one bit of information at the back, one at the front, and then you don't need to spend loads of money on like a fancy LCD cooler in the first place. I love that customizability. There's clearly endless customization, and I think it's pretty darn cool. But that's it anyway. As you can see, they are literally now packing up, and I am, as usual, getting in the way. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you make of the booth? What do you like? Do you agree with me that these are some of the, mind the step, there is no step, it's all right. <laughs> uh, do you agree with me that these are some of the most interesting cases that we've seen in a long time? Or do you think that they are just gentle refreshes and maybe they don't deserve the coverage? Let me know your thoughts, but like this video if you've enjoyed it, get yourself subscribed, and we'll catch you in the next one.